<laughs> Turn the clock. Yes. Hurley from Lost, you have a question. <laughs> it's Hurley um, cosplay. In um, uh, the Dragon Ball game, you were a uh, uh, voice director. What did that entail? Um, voice direction is just a fancy name for dude who tells other really good voice guys what to do. Um, in, in the case of a Dragon Ball game, a lot of the time that's a lot of organization, and and most of it is knowing what the crap is going on in Dragon Ball. Because they can't just get anybody to direct it. Well, unless they got pretty much any of you. So don't you ever apply for work there. Um, but yeah, it involves uh, finding the actors. Because sometimes they get all spread out and they're all over the world doing their own thing. We have to all bring them into one studio. I own the studio where it's at. A, it's a, a studio in Texas called Okratron 5000. Um, it's a, it's a weird name, I know. Uh, the okra means nothing. Tron gives it technological significance. Um, just like anything that you add the word Tron to. You know, like a shirt Tron or like <laughs> shoes Tron. Makes it sound really badass. Um, and 5,000 gives it longevity because there were a lot of companies that called themselves like Laundry Mat 2000. And then like, as we approached the year 2000, I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> Your business is outdated, so there you go. Thank you for the question. But yeah, being a voice director, in, in, especially with dubbing, is mostly knowing the, the show really well. Because when you're working on it, especially with a lot of these dub actors, I mean, if I had to watch every single show that I was in, I would never be able to even act because it would take you so long to watch everything especially One Piece. I would still be watching that. I wouldn't be able to come. Uh, so it's the voice director's job to kind of know what everybody sounds like. And because of the timing of anime and the way it's recorded, you only, you only get to, to record one character at a time. And so, especially if you're, you know, if you're directing the very first actor on an episode, it's the director's job to make sure that that actor says everything right because he has nothing to hear. Um, once you've got most of the show recorded, of course, then you get to hear, uh, as you're acting, you get to hear all the other people doing their thing, but about halfway through, up until about halfway through it's done, it's pretty awkward. Yes, more questions, please, yes. In a suit. <laughs> Hi. Um, when uh, a lot of the animes you worked on, uh, Dragon Z, One Piece as well, they've had a, a lot of censorship when it first came out. Um, when you read over that sort of stuff, do you, does it kind of, I don't know if you're familiar with the term make your face palm, or you know, why are they doing this, or did you, did you understand where they're coming from, or just kind of get on with your job? Well, I mean, I just gotta, it's like, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of censorship to some, like, to a certain point, it's nice not to, you know, it's nice for parents not to have to watch absolutely everything their kids watch just to see if it's okay for their sentimentality, but the stuff that has to go on American TV is so ridiculously censored. I don't know if you guys realize this, but like on the, the CW, on the, the Saturday morning cartoons in America, they made Mr. Popo blue. <laughs> I mean, talk about calling attention to something. I mean, it just it doesn't even look right. They took the character, they gave him this like kind of blue glow, but in a way it kind of made him disappear at the same time. So I don't know how they did that effect, but it just, I guess when you put a blue glow on a really, really, really dark black color, it doesn't do anything except make it look kind of weird and smeared out. Look it up, it's funny. but. Yeah, I, I tend to groan on when we do them, and sometimes I'll actually do Mark really, Link. really sarcastic um, edits when they have to be done. Like just calling someone a pancake eater or something like that, just to, because if it's going to be, if it's going to have to be edited, well, it might as well be retarded too, so. And I mean, when I say retarded, I don't mean in a wrong way, in a someone who can do anything kind of way, you know? There was a bit in Dragon Ball Z that was uh, completely cut out. It's when Vegeta gets the Dragon Ball when he's on the on the, the planet and he destroys the whole town and goes on burying people. And you can see crosses everywhere. And he's going, "Oh, I hope they all got away." It's like, and then the camera pans out and you see the death and destruction everywhere. Oh. It's like 
really, is anyone going to buy that? Even if they just say it in a different way. I wish I had my laptop. nuts. If I only had my laptop here, I would show you some of the the outtakes that we've done that I wish we could release one of these days. But yeah, there is one where I was making fun of Gohan um, finding all the Namekians dead. And uh, I think I changed it to, oh no, they're all asleep. <laughs> he made them all the asleep simultaneously. <laughs> um, the Namekians sure are a sleepy race, I think is what we said. Um, any other questions? Awesome, please help me out. I've got to talk for a long time. You, you, Daniel, Dan, Daniel McMasterson. McMasterson. Is there any character in an anime series you wanted to voice but couldn't? Um, Ooh, shit. I always wanted to be Solid Snake, and um, <laughs> yeah, Metal Gear Solid. I always wanted to play that character. David Hayter does a really good job of it, though, so I can't really make fun of it. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know any of the lines from it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, see, I gave up on wanting to be his voice, so I tried not to mimic him. Do you, I will tell you a voice I did get cast on was uh, Marcus Phoenix in uh, Gears of War. I was the original Marcus Phoenix voice because for a little while they were doing their production work in Dallas, but then something happened and they had to moved the production back to California, so I lost my gig, and they found a guy who sounds almost exactly like me, which is awesome, too. Um, that would have been fun. But I still like the game, and I played it anyway. Uh, yes? You mentioned every other anime, except for kind of one I'm actually interested in, is D. Gray Man. Well, I didn't understand anything until you said D. Gray Man. Yeah, that's about it. I said, I haven't said anything about D. Gray Man. <laughs> The Gray Man? It's, what do I think of it? Yeah. It's, uh, it is quality tele television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I have a character in that that, I'll, yeah, he doesn't appear very often. And, but yeah, uh, D. Gray Man, if you haven't seen it, uh, just watch Full Metal Alchemist. First, and then watch the Gray Man. You might like uh, you might like Full Metal Alchemist because they're kind of almost exactly the same show to some degree. No offense. I mean, watch it and buy it in bulk. Is there any new anime that you're dubbing in? Um, nah. <laughs> um, I'm doing some stuff, and sadly, I don't know what. I, like, they don't um, let us talk about some of the things we're working on. Um, shoot, and sometimes I don't know what I'm allowed to say and what what I can't because some stuff has they haven't even announced the titles for them yet. Uh, let's see. I did a little bit more work on Shin Chan recently. I don't know if you, do you guys ever watch that show? Yeah. Lesbians. <laughs> uh, if you don't, you should watch that show. It's rich. Retarded, and I mean that in a very good way. Hello. 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 Um, have there been any roles that you kind of wish you didn't take in the end after after the aftermath? Ah, uh, yes, there have been. One I played uh, in the early episodes of Dragon Ball. I played the Ox King. Oh. And which was yeah. fine when he was just going. Yeah, G -G. Um, it was really easy when he was just like a big oaf that sat around the house. But then when we went back to Dragon Ball, and he was supposed to be this huge dude who talked a lot, I was like, I can't do that voice. I can't do it. Like, I literally cannot make him talk for extended periods of time. So I gave the role to uh, Kyle Bear, who plays Gohan. So uh, yeah, he had to finish that up for me. I did not like doing it. But typically, I like almost any role I'm given, because it's money, for one. <laughs> And secondly, it's really ridiculously fun work. At the end of the day, it's I chuckle at how lucky um, I am that I get to do this every day. And I people ask me how I got into it, and I really honestly don't know. It wasn't like I wanted to be a voice actor when I was a kid, um, because when I was a voice uh, when I was a kid, I, I uh, didn't realize that the voices just didn't appear on the screen. 
like everything else. I just didn't realize that there was an actor making the sound of the voice. Between you and me, I thought that Kermit the Frog was real, so <laughs> um, I still do. Yeah, um, hi. Um, just want to ask you quickly, what's been your favorite anime series that you worked on that you, out of all the ones you've done? Hmm. My favorite right now is Sergeant Frog. Still Sergeant, Sergeant Frog. Frog. You gotta check it out. Um, let's see, my favorite other anime that I've worked on. I actually really like um, Speed Graffer. Did you guys ever watch Speed Graffer? That's a really crazy dark show. Not for children. Dun, 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 Don't dun. ever watch it. <laughs> Reject it. Don't ever watch that show. Oh, that's the mean face. <laughs> I'm just kidding, she scared me. You can watch it now. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, stay in school. Stay in drugs, don't use school. <laughs> I mean, sorry, strike that, reverse it. <laughs> drugs are bad for you, unless you're sick or bored. <laughs> um, do not take any of my advice. <laughs> Wow, she is staring at me. She is like soaking this all in. Um, you're British, you don't listen to Americans anyway, so I don't have to worry. Hi, um, have you ever, uh, have you ever had a, an experience where you've got the final product and you, you listen to it, watch it, and you're not happy with the takes that they chose and it didn't really convey what you wanted? You thought, oh, they could have they used, there's a much better take they could have used, and now it's not. What, you know, what you intended. Hmm. Typically I get the final say when I'm directing something, but when I'm acting in something, I don't. And sometimes, yeah, there have been, there've been situations where I do, I don't necessarily, like, some directors just hear things differently than I do. I, I can't think of any, I can't think of any one thing that would be easy to say without totally offending a director that wouldn't hire me anymore, but yeah, there, there are a few directors that I don't necessarily agree with. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really vague, lame answer to that question. Um, let's see. How strong am I? Really strong. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, who's your favorite voice actor to work with and who's your least favorite? Ooh. Mm. My favorite voice actor to work with. Uh, if, it, like, if I, okay, I'm gonna have to keep it to kind of a short list of people, but if I had to call in a handful of actors for every project, it would always include Colleen Clinkenbeard, if you know her, she's in everything. Uh, Laura Bailey is, a, is awesome. Uh, Lucy Christian is a complete rock star. Uh, let's see, Todd Habercorn is pretty amazing. And uh, let's see, who else do I work with? I mean, I just use myself as all the guy voices, so I really don't ever have to call anyone in. That. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. I love working. I, I love working with Travis Willingham. He's ridiculous, and Troy Baker is one of the most fantastic actors I've ever met. Like the guy is stupid awesome. Um, least favorite actors uh, are all those same people, I would say, <laughs> particularly uh, Travis Willingham. <laughs> Uh, he's a complete douche. <laughs> um, by the way, just in case you're interested, Travis Willingham and Laura Bailey just got engaged to be married. Woo! They're gonna make anime voice babies. <laughs> <laughs> and they're gonna name their kid Gohan, I think. Yay! Risen Ball Rangers and tiny mini skirts. Tiny mini skirts, hands down. <laughs> Oh, big man. Yes. <laughs> Hi, um, many uh, dubbers are from America, and do they, um, do you guys consider when you're dubbing the European market? I mean, do you even think like right, um, what you're saying makes sense? in European way or whatever? Um, well, typically the script is written before we get it. So it's the writer's job to try and make sense of what the Japanese are saying for one. Because sometimes the translation looks uh, 
like a crossword puzzle where it doesn't always make sense. Um, by the time I get it, I, I don't really think I don't really think about the European market at all because I just kind of think about anybody who's going to watch it is just going to watch it. I mean, I, I can't imagine if there's anything that people don't understand in Europe, it's probably the same stuff they wouldn't understand in America because I, I don't. I don't like to put a lot of pop culture references in. If I see them in the script, I usually take them out. I try not to make reference to to anything that's happening in America or anything stupid like that. So generally, we just take the Japanese translation and turn it into the best sounding English that we can. And when I'm directing, I'm just trying to think of, I don't even think about what will fans think of this or what will people who like anime think of it. I just I kind of just watch and I go, what would I want to see? Because it's the only thing I can count on. If I think, if I constantly think about like what will everyone else think of it, then I can't get it done right. If I just have to imagine what I, I, what I would want it to sound like in my head, and I just make it sound like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. No offense to anyone in the UK. It's like we. I just don't think of any. I, I really don't think of a market when I'm doing this. We just do it. To, we just do it to have fun doing it. You know. But Funimation may answer that question differently. They may think of stuff like that. Yes, uh, Frieza, Lord Frieza. Oh, sorry. Did you get an internet meme with your over 9,000 words? What, did, oh, actually, um, that meme is sort of like, it's sort of the bane of my existence to some <laughs> degree. It'd be like if there was someone who walked around you constantly and said, Hey, hey, say something funny. Say it, say it, say something funny again. And do you guys, and do you know what I think of any time anyone asks me to say that? And it's actually a show that belongs to you. One of my favorite shows of all time is uh, Ricky, that Ricky Gervais series called Extras. Oh, yeah. Do the catchphrase, do, do the catchphrase. <laughs> do the catchphrase, do it. It reminds me so much of that scene where he goes into the bar and the guy's trying to get him to do the catchphrase and he doesn't want to do it. And then when he realizes that he can be popular because uh, people want him to hear it, then he ends up saying it all the time. But yeah, I love that show, but I do feel kind of embarrassed anyone, anytime anyone asks me to do it. It's not a bad thing. I, like, I want to hear it too. If I wasn't me. Um, how did you start out in your career? And like, how did you get noticed by the industry? So how, how did I get indoctrinated by the anime world? How did I get sucked into this weird universe? <laughs> Um, I was, uh, I think I, ta I, I talked briefly at the beginning about this, but it was, uh, I was in college at the time, and I went to go work for this little company called Funimation, and I got the gig through an audition. It, it's, I got this audition to do this one little movie, and it turned out that the movie was sort of a test to see if it would actually work. Because um, originally they were doing the voices somewhere else, and they wanted to move in down to Canada down to Texas from Canada. And so once we did this, uh, they realized that they were it was possible for us to do the voices in Texas. So they moved all the voice work there, and that's when we started working on Dragon Ball. And that was kind of like, sort of my start in anime voice acting. <laughs>